Hit the like button for me. Come on in. Welcome. Now, let's just hypothetically say, I'm just using this for the sake of illustration, y'all, for the scope of this illustration. Might not be concrete numbers. It varies. Now, promoter might say it's going to cost you $1,000 just as a slot fee to get on the cards. For your fighter to get on this card, it's going to cost you a minimum of $1,000. That's the slot fee, right? Okay. Promoter might say, you have to be responsible for your fighter that you represent. You have to be responsible for their purse. In other words, is you're the manager, you got to pay their purse. Not the promoter, because you're not obligated to me as a promoter, right? You're just trying to get your fighter a win. Now, He says the promoter says you gotta you gotta uh you gotta pay you gotta pay a, a slot fee, then you gotta pay the purse of your fighter, then you gotta pay for the airfare and hotel room for your fighter, their trainer, and if they have a cut man or cut woman as well, and of course there's an opponent. Now, how does the how does the opponent get paid? So the manager recognized that, hold on for a minute. I got to do all these expenses for my fighter that I represent and the medicals if they need to be medically cleared. Got it. Excuse me. They make the manager pay for the medicals as well. Now, to the opponent. The promoter says, okay, you know, you know you're going to need an opponent. Now you can do one of two things. Either one or A, you can find you your own you can find you your own opponent. Or B, as a promoter of this event, I'll find you an opponent. The only difference is that there's a fee involved if I find you an opponent. Manager may have to pay for that. Now, let's say the manager say, well, you know what? I'll find an opponent on my own. Or I'll make a few phone calls to different matchmakers for them to help me find different opponents. Or I'll go on box rec in the division that my fighter is competing in, and then I'll do my research and investigation and reach out to those fighters that basically can meet the criteria to, to fight my fighter on this particular date. Guess what the manager is presumed to have to do in that scenario? The same thing he or she did with their fighter. Pay the opponent's purse, right? Because remember, the opponent is not signed to the promoter that's hosting the event either, right? Pay for the opponent's purse. Pay for the opponent's airfare. Now, this is round trip now. It's not one way. Round trip. Pay for trainers. Airfare that opponent want to bring his or her cut man or cut woman pay for that as well. If they need medicals, pay for the medicals as well. Y'all see where I'm going with this, right? Okay. <clears throat> now, pay for the hotel rooms, just like just like the manager did for his or her fighter, right? You got to pay for the hotel room for the fighter and the, the fighter, meaning the opponent and their trainer. And, and if they have a cut man or cut woman that they want to bring with them as well. Some people, you know, they defray the cost by having double rooms. You know what I'm saying? So the trainer and the fighter can, you know, stay in the same room if they are the same gender and everything like that. You know, that's how, that's one of the ways you can defray the cost. You know, so just imagine all of these expenses are provided to the manager. So when you hear someone like Mike Sr. say that 
he got sponsorship money to make sure that his son got on certain cards. That's what he's talking about. I wanted to make sure I translate that so that we all can be on the same page and have an understanding of this business. When someone is a free agent, when I say someone, I mean a professional boxing athlete, especially when they're up and coming in the ranks. Because somebody may have missed what Mike Senior was saying, so I'm translating that so we all can be on the same page of why I asked him that question. Now, when I asked Mike Senior about that process, Mike Senior told me his son's reward was a win. What, is, what does he mean by that? Let's keep it very simple. Ladies and gentlemen, members of the jury, members of the Roll the Tape film crew, what he means by that is the opponent is going to be an opponent or opposition that's basically not expected to win because that opponent is not in a position to be on the same skill level of that fighter. That's the A side in that fight. Meaning that that opponent, most of the time, they're coming to survive. And no disrespect to no fighter, but we got to call a spade a spade and deal with what's real. Most of the fighters know that they are already opponents. They already know that. They've already accepted the truth that they will not become world champions. Their resume and record speaks to what I'm saying. This is not a knock on fighters. I'm telling you the thought process of how fighters become opponents. And at some point, they probably were prospects at first. Some of them, some of them, no. But it becomes a business for the opponent. Because an opponent, barring that they don't get knocked out, barring that the uh, commission don't suspend them, they can fight once every three weeks, once every month, once every two months, once every three months. And it becomes a business for opponents. You understand what I'm saying, y'all? So what Mike Sr. was saying, that his son was always the A-side in 99.9% .9 of the fights that he fought because they paid for those type of opponents who don't have the skill level or who's not on the same level as, let's say, a Mike Jr., who has come to fight but only to survive because it's just another payday for the opponent. Some people may call them tomato cans, Uber, Lyft drivers, you know, little school bus drivers. You know, these are, these are terms that are uh, privately identifiable to opponents. Okay? Now, with that being said, that does not nullify the fact that just because a fighter is a prospect does not necessarily mean that they're going to get paid more than the opponents. I told y'all classes in session this evening. What manager Marty is saying this evening, 99.9% .9 of the time, especially if the A side is not signed to a promoter and they're a free agent, the opponent will make more money than the A side. The B side will make more money than the A side. The opponent will make more money than the prospect. The red corner will make more than the blue corner. Remember I told y'all, what was that, a week and a half ago? I told y'all when there's a boxing event, there's no such thing as A side, B side. That's not how the fighters are identified. Remember I told y'all that? They're identified by red corner, blue corner. Remember I told y'all that? And remember I taught y'all how to identify who's the A side and B side in your mind or who's the red corner and blue corner? Remember I taught y'all that? 